name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with the Spirit. Good evening, everyone. Today we celebrate the 23rd Sunday of Ordinary Time, and welcome to all visitors here for the first time. We begin this Mass, let us thank the Lord for the many gifts that He's given us in this world, and also ask Him to forgive us of our sins as we call them to mind. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to Philemon. I, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Christ Jesus, urge you on behalf of my child, Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I should oblige to retain for him for myself, so that he might serve me on your behalf in my imprisonment for the gospel. But I do not want to do anything without your consent, so that the good you do might not be forced, but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother, beloved, special to me, but even more so to you as a man and in the Lord. So if you regard me as a partner, welcome him as you would me. The word of the Lord.
What are your plans for the future? What are you doing tonight? What are you doing next week? I remember when I was a lot younger and so much engrossed in rock and roll and music. When I was in high school, very active in the band. And my aunt would say, well, you know, you just can't make a living doing that. What's your plan for the future? You should finish college. And I was thinking, okay, well, I might think about that, but I didn't. As you see, look at the mess I'm in now. <laughs> what is your plan for the future? Your future on earth and your future in heaven. It is a well-known statement that you may have heard. If you fail to plan, you plan to... Oh, you've heard it too? Okay. Great. Yes. A lot of wisdom in those worlds. Jesus, the source of wisdom in today's gospel, offers a similar teaching. He said, which of you constructing a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there is enough for completion? Jesus also teaches that in following him, we must carry the cross of some sufferings in this life. It's inevitable. Sufferings that come from experiencing him as the way, the truth, and the life. Even above our parents, who we are commanded to honor in the fourth commandment, we must place it first. Jesus, as a teacher, likes to throw cold water in the face of his listeners, lest they fall asleep during his preaching. He does this by saying to the crowds following him, if anybody comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Wow, wouldn't that wake you up if you were kind of dozing off and he's talking about love and all this? Unless you hate your father and mother, does Jesus really want us to hate the members of our family? Does he really want us to hate our own life? Of course not. He does want us to hate sin, to hate sin in its true essence. Life's spiritual combat, permitted by God so that we can use our freedom to choose from above all earthly powers that are corrupt. It is in this battle where we find the cross we must carry in this life if we wish to come after Jesus to be his disciple. Our first reading from the Book of Wisdom is spiritual food for thought as we plan our future on earth and our future in heaven. The reading began by asking the question, who can know God's counsel? Or who can conceive what the Lord intends? For the deliberation of mortals are timid and unsure of our plans. For the corruptible body burdens the soul and scarce do we guess the things on earth and what is within our grasp we find with difficulty. It is this description of humanity, a humanity without heavenly wisdom, where the world repeatedly makes the same mistakes. Study history, you see it over and over again when nations turn their back on God, over and over again when nations return to God. It's a way, sort of like this. You can see it if you study history. Without God, history repeats itself in this particular cycle. There is usually a moral erosion, a gradual beginning, and then it accelerates. And this precedes what has happened. We see uh, it precedes an appalling lack of education, an increase in anarchy violence, crime, drug abuse, breakdown of traditional family unit. The cycle of civilization, when you study history and see this different nation, takes 200 or 300 more years to reach its peak. And at the moment, when it seems to no longer have any challenges, when it should be ready to continue to go forward, it oftentimes collapses as it gets complacent and turns away from God. This cycle is also built, not only in human history with nations, it's also built into human flesh. Strong men make good times. 
Good times make weak men. Weak men make bad times. Bad times make strong men. You know it, right? Around and around it goes. I believe we are in the phase now where weak men are making bad times. We must remember during this nuclear age, our eyes upon Ukraine's nuclear reactor, we must remember what Fulci once said, wars are not just made by politics. Wars are crises and judgments that come upon us because of the way we live. We see astonishing disintegration of civility and decency, and this is the result of a people who have become morally and intellectually weak because of the good times that we grew up in. We lower our God and begin to believe in stupid and harmful things. We have weak men who present themselves as fake women. That doesn't do anybody any good. We have a very powerful minority social elite that wants to build a global economy based on Rothschilds and Schwab's vision of inclusive capitalism in a new world order. Do civilizations chasing their downfall due to moral erosion and power-hungry idiots know the counsel of God that comes to us through the wisdom of the Holy Spirit sent from on high? It is by way of the Holy Spirit that the paths of those on earth, you and I, hopefully many others, are made straight. How are we planning our future on earth as we plan for our future in heaven? Well, we must sit down, pray, do penance, return to God in all of the areas of our life, not just some. We calculate, we must calculate who God is calling us to be as a Christian during these times that we are living in today. We must never lose hope, never lose hope in the power of the Holy Spirit who enlightens us about the times we live in, guides us in our present and future decisions. The Holy Spirit strengthens us in our spiritual combat. The Holy Spirit consoles us in the face of persecution and empowers us to rise up Rise up and be disciples of Jesus Christ, who courageously and courageously carry our cross in the face of the world's moral erosion and stupid secular beliefs. This is how we plan for our future on this earth, our common home. This is how we plan for our future in heaven, our eternal home.
Let us come to the Father who remains our refuge and our strength. That our Pope, our bishops, our clergy, and religious may continue to show forth an example of discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we are that developing countries may not lose sight of God's will for human happiness in a quest for prosperity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we are That those who struggle with addiction or emotional illness may learn to walk in the steps of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are That we may lay aside trust in material possessions and find our true strength in God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we are that those who have passed through this short life may exult and rejoice forever in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we are For all of our first responders, for those in the military, all around the world, that they be kept safe. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we are For the prayers that we hold silently in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Father of all wisdom, marvelously you created us, with greater wonders you redeemed us. Hear the prayers of the disciples of your Son. Grant our requests according to your will. In Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your for the praise of the Lord.
salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world, and in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, the merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. May we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
faithful, O Lord, and you nourish the endowed with life through the fruit of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may bear an eternal share in this life who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. St. John's Bible study is coming soon. Uh, we are offering an eight-week program adapt adapted from a program called Our Story, a Bible refresher for Catholics by the American Bible Society. The first session will be held on Wednesday, September 21st at 6 p.m. in the school cafeteria. We have a sign-up sheet at the front end, near the front entrance of the church for those interested. Um, hope you take advantage of this. Uh, we used to have a Bible study, if you recall, those of you here long enough, um, actually uh, a couple of years ago. We were doing pretty well, and then we had to um, dismantle that for a little bit. We're coming back now. Uh, on September 10th, the week of September 10th and 11th, Sister Irene from Mary Queen of Heaven Missionaries will be here to speak to us on how she is helping to save God's children from sex trafficking and poverty. We made this announcement uh, the last couple of weekends. I'm not going to go in depth with that, except she has a very interesting ministry of, uh, with her nuns going into the bars and the places of rough, ill repute, not just as nuns, but as um, uh, superheroes. Now they come in and they find women who they think are involved with, with being victims of sex trafficking or prostitution, and they tend to pull them aside and say, there is another way. They are brave. They are very brave women. Sister Irene is one of them. Uh, the Rite of Christian Initiation for Adults, RCIA, begins on Thursday, September 8th at 6 p.m. in the church. If any of you are interested in becoming Catholics or want to further your faith, deepen it, uh, you can uh, check with Father Will Gansey, contact him at the office or uh, by email. In the, in the bulletin, there's more information about that. There is an annual Catholic Renewal Conference, the 40, 41st Annual Renewal Conference. It's called Intimacy with God. If you can say those words really fast five times, you get in free. No. <laughs> Actually, there is no fee. No fee to attend this. Uh, it's being held Saturday, September 24th, at St. Sylvester's Conference Hall. So please register if you're interested, or email what you see in the information is in the bulletin. Parish office will be closed on Monday, September 5th, for Labor Day, and for the rest of the year. <laughs> Lost you. I need that cold water. What Jesus was saying. Uh, okay, now we're closed on Monday. I wish you all a beautiful Labor Day weekend. It's always great to have a three day weekend. And then, you know, then later on, uh, you know, be reunited with friends and family. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel.